Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Mr. Kovalt and today we are going to be going over the naming of ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. So in uh, my uh, previous video I talked about polyatomic ions and how, to, uh, how they're named and how, uh, how you can see the patterns that will help you memorize them. So you should know the names of the polyatomic ions. And I'll keep going back to what I say about the naming of ionic compounds is if you know the names of the ions, you just put those names together and that is the name of your compound. So if you don't know the name of the polyatomic ions, you're not going to figure out the names of the compounds. Okay, so let's uh, get into this. So I have five examples and I'm going to go through them and show you how you name them. So first thing you need to do is identify the substance as an ionic compound and it's always going to be a metal and a non-metal. So the metal is a dead giveaway. So the metal comes first. So sodium is a metal. And again, I'm going to name that metal um, according to the name uh, that the ion it forms, which is the same as the uh, name on the periodic table. So the element name becomes the name of the ion as well. Um, and the second thing I'm going to identify is whether or not this can have a variable charge or only one charge. You, again, your main group elements are going to be mostly uh, only one charge. They're not going to be variable charge. There are, uh, there are going to be variable charged uh, metals, but those are mainly going to be your transition elements. Not all the transition elements will be multiple charges. There will be uh, some that are only one charge. And so those are going to be like uh, scandium, um, silver, zinc, cadmium, um, and I think that's those are it. Um, so if it's not one of those uh, elements, then it's going to have a variable charge. So sodium, sodium is a main group element, so it's only going to have uh, one charge. So to figure out the charge, again, you go to your periodic table and you look at the pattern. And remember, uh, if you're talking about groups 1, 2, and 3A, then the charge on the ion is the same as the group number. Uh, so here we have sodium, it's in group 1, so that's going to be a plus uh, 1 charge. Um, and so the name of this, again, is just going to be sodium. Um, we don't have to worry about the Roman numerals. Again, you only put Roman numerals for the elements, or the I should say the metals, that have variable charge. So since sodium does not have a variable charge, um, we just say sodium ion. So sodium is going to be the first part of the name, sodium. And then... The, if you want to identify this as a polyatomic ion, then again, you first have to identify it as an ionic substance. So you've already identified the metal, so you only have two ions in, in your substance. So if you've already identified the metal, then everything else has to be the other ion. So here you have NO2. Now students are going to look at this and they want to name it as a, a molecular compound. So don't do that. You're going to name this as an ion because we've already determined that this is an ionic substance and the metal is Na. So that means that whatever is left over is your ion. Since we have more than one atom, this is a polyatomic ion. So you need to be able to, uh, you need to know the name and the uh, you need to know the name of your polyatomic ion. So NO2, you should recognize that as a nitrite ion. So you just write nitrite here. So that's the name of your substance, sodium nitrite. So like I said, if you know the names of the ions, you just put the names together and that's the name of your substance. Let's go ahead and do the next one. So here I identify this as an ionic substance because I have a metal and a non-metals, so it's ionic. Next I have to figure out is this a 
is this an element or a metal with a variable charge or only one charge? Iron is a transition element and it will have a variable charge. It's not, it's not, the, uh, it's not one of the ones that only has one charge like silver, cadmium, zinc, and so on. So this is going to have variable charge. So in order for me to name this ion, I need to know the charge on it. So I'm going to go to the other ion. And again, you'll notice that for this element, if this is the metal, then what's left over is my ion. And again, I have a polyatomic ion. So I need to know the name and the charge on this ion. So this uh, SO4 has a 2 minus charge. So Again, the ions are balanced and charged, so zero charge total. So if this has a negative charge, so there's a two negative charge on this ion, to balance that out, the iron has to have a two plus charge. So this iron has a two plus charge. So that means that the name of this ion is iron two. So I write down iron two, so because we're going to need to use a Roman numeral, iron, iron two. So I had the first name of my substance, so iron two ion, iron two. Now I need to know the name of this ion. This, in, this ion, SO4 two minus, is called the sulfate ion. So all I do is write sulfate. So iron 2 sulfate is the name of this substance here. Uh, let's go to the next one. So here, you'll notice that I don't have a metal. So I might be um, uh, fooled into thinking that this is a, a molecular substance, and it's not. So again, you have to recognize the polyatomic ions. This NH4 is a polyatomic ion. This NO3 is a polyatomic ion. So this is an ionic substance. So now in this case, I don't have a metal. I don't need to figure out how to name the metal. All I need to know is the names of the ions. Na4 has a, NH4 has a negative plus. So we call that, we're going to, that's the ammonium ion. So we write ammonium. So the ammonium ion, ammonium. And then this ion, NO3, that has a negative charge, that's going to be your nitrate. So we write nitrate. So... The name of this compound is ammonium nitrate. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here we look, we have a metal, we have nonmetals, so this is ionic. So the metal is lithium, so that means the rest of this is our polyatomic ion. So I need to know the name of this one, this is lithium. And I need to determine if that's going to have uh, multiple charges or only one charge. Lithium is a main group element, so it's only going to have one charge. Lithium is in group, uh, this is in group one, so that's only going to have one charge on it. So I write lithium. because it's a main group metal, so it's, there's, no, there's no Roman numeral. So it's called the lithium ion, so I write lithium. This ion here, Cr2O7, this has a negative two charge on it. You have to know the name of this ion. So this is called the dichromate ion. So I'm gonna write dichromate. Di Chromate. So that is the name of this compound, lithium dichromate. And then finally, we have this compound here, identified as an ionic substance. Here we have tin, 
That's our metal, and here we have non-metals. So it's metal and non-metal that's ionic. Now we, I need to determine the metal. Is this, uh, is this a transition metal with variable charge, or is it a main group metal with only one charge? What is it? So this is definitely a transition metal, and it is not one of the ones that have only one charge. This is gonna have variable charge, so I need to figure out what the charge is on this one in order to name it. So I have to go to the negative ion. And again, I have a polyatomic ion, so I need to know what the charge on this ion is. Otherwise, I can't name the metal. So I recognize ClO3 as a chlorate ion. Chlorate ions. Just like chlorine, chloride ions have a negative one, the chlorate ion has a negative one. If you remember from the pattern uh, that I went over in, in a previous video. So this has a negative one charge. I have two of them, so that means I have a total of a negative two charge. For this to be zero charge, I need a total of a positive charge. I only have one tin atom, so that positive two charge has to go on there. So that positive two is on the tin, so now I know the charge of the tin, and so it's gonna be tin two ion. So I write down tin two. So tin two for this ion, I already named this one, this one is chlorate. So I'm going to write chlorate. So this substance, the name is tin 2 chlorate. I hope that was helpful. And remember, um, if you know the names of the ions that form the ionic compound, you just put the names together, and that becomes the name of your substance. But you got to know the names of the ions. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you like this video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to this channel, make a comment in the comment section, let me know what you think, if there's anything else you want me to do, um, and make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified of any new videos. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time.